Hi, everyone. Welcome to the St. Ignatius Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you are here. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all, feel free to use the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are here, ready and available to answer your questions. Your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. There are, and all sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash ignitious. We are currently in session C6, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this is also the same order of presentations. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and we'll kick it off with our first representative from Augustana College. Um, thanks so much. Uh, so my name is Christian Brown. I am uh, one of the actually Chicago based uh, regionals for Augustana College. Uh, I am coming to you from the city of Chicago. It is 82 degrees today and there's a party outside my house. So if you hear that, my bad, I'll try my best. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and get started. Let me go ahead and share my screen for you. There we go. All right, so you should be able to see that. So Augustana College is a small liberal arts school located about three hours west of uh, Chicago. So we are uh, a good drive almost to the state line of Iowa. Um, you'll see here on our screen, we are a pretty traditional college in a sense of we're pretty centralized and where all of our buildings are and provide a really awesome and just kind of beautiful space for, for students to attend throughout the year. If you're not familiar with what is Quad Cities, uh, Quad Cities is actually a, a collection of technically five cities, so I know that math isn't right, but it is a collection of about five cities, and we specifically sit in the Rock Island area, so uh, a campus of about 2,500 students, but in an area of about 400,000 people, so we actually have quite a bit of, of, of a community uh, of sorts. Uh, we have everything from your Costco that you find here in Chicagoland to even a Pertillo's now. So all the things that you might get uh, here in your home area, you can definitely access in the Quad Cities. So here are some quick facts again about our campus, uh, thinking about the type of school. So as you're starting your college search and you start to think about public versus private, international versus domestic, we are an in-state option for you as a small liberal arts school. So if that's something that might, uh, you know, maybe appeals to you, maybe you're not wanting to go too far from home, we can probably be a good fit. Uh, we have about 90 academic programs with two newest uh, being kinesiology and data analytics. So as you're thinking about those opportunities and what you might get at a liberal arts school, we don't really lack or, or lack in those STEM-based programs. So you can really get a very well-balanced experience and be very prepped for those STEM programs, just like you would in any of the more liberal art heavy focuses. Uh, we have a lot to do on campus. So just 2,500 students, there are lots of activities to participate in. Uh, we're searching everything from social justice type things all the way over to those um, more lighter topics of, of just interest, everything from gaming right to online women's run magazine so we like to be appealing to as many types of interest as possible uh, this in, uh, image here shows you some of the more popular programs i encourage you to take a look at our website to see a more complete list but the more bolded uh, programs you'll see here do show some of the ones where we get a lot of overlap so students who are really looking at uh, those those larger type programs. Uh, we have great placement rates in pre-med. That's how you get those neuroscience students, uh, great connections in education. So I would advise to definitely explore those and look at some of our student profiles for students coming out of those programs. Um, I know students like numbers and parents like statistics. And so we wanted to provide a little bit of that to you here. Uh, one of my favorite statistics about our, our campus is that 89% of our students will have some type of out of the classroom experience. Outside experiences are wonderful. That's what makes us diverse thinkers. That's what eliminates some of the hate that we have. Uh, sometimes we see in our society. And so when we get you out of the classroom, when we get you in front of different types of people, we feel like we're doing our part as a liberal arts institution. Uh, over half of our students will travel away. Yep, this was a strange year. So maybe not as much this past year, but in, in a normal year, over 50% of our students are traveling abroad. 
And my favorite topic, 98% of our students have a plan when they're getting uh, to the point of graduation. So those students know what they're going to do. They know where they're going to go, whether that's graduate school or into job opportunities. They have that plan in place uh, and are instituting that or executing, I should say, that plan within the six months of graduating. So thinking about the practical things. So you're like, okay, that's cool. A quick over facts and view of your campus. What do you look for? So we are considered a holistic review process with our application. We uh, look for students with a 3.0 GPA or higher. That's a recalculated GPA on uh, average. We're looking for regular. We're also looking though for what you're interested in. We want to make sure that we're diversifying our population with interests, with where folks come from, what you know backgrounds people have. Um, and that's the kind of campus community that we built through our application and review process. So all of the things that you see here on the screen will definitely be taken into consideration as we're thinking about you know, how you'll play a fit and then also what we can offer you in the growth uh, that you'll hopefully have once you leave our campus for admissions. Uh, scholarships are something that you're also reviewed for at the time that you apply and they are a holistic review process. Our scholarship awards, uh, we basically have three forms of funding. So first, merit scholarships, which we award up to about $28,000 per year. We also have specialty awards though. So thinking in terms of what those might look like, $1,000 visit grant. If you visit, we'll give you $1,000. Um, if you, and that's each year actually, if you do a social justice and a change scholarship module kit, that can award you a $1,000 micro scholarship each year for four years. So there's some really unique ways to earn money, but they do require a bit of action. So I encourage students to definitely start looking at you know what that timeline is, when you can expect to be getting that information uh, started so that you don't miss out on any funds. And then finally, of course, there's need based aid. So if you're worried about college and you're thinking, okay, how am I going to fund this? Definitely consider um, being prepared to submit that FAFSA and be considered for any other types of aid that, that may require a review uh, based on, on your need. So that's everything I'm going to cover for today. I would encourage you to definitely reach out. Uh, I would say that we offer things like interviews on our campus and we are open for tours safely. So if you are uh, excited about that and would like to start that journey with us, we look forward to hopefully connecting with you soon. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you. The next representative is from the university, from University College Dublin. Great, thank you. I'm just going to share my screen here real quick. Um, great. So thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in today. Thank you, Stratoscan, for hosting us. My name is Bridie Troy, and I'm here to talk about University College Dublin, also called UCD for short. UCD is Ireland's largest and most international university, but we are home to over 18,000 undergraduate students, almost 30% of whom hail from outside of Ireland, just like all of you. UCD is ranked number one in Ireland by the US News and World Report, and we are in the top 1% of higher education institutions worldwide. So you can be sure that when you get your degree with UCD, you are getting a degree that is internationally ranked and internationally accredited that you'll be able to carry with you throughout the world. So first off, I would love to talk about the Emerald Isle, what it's like to live, study, and travel in Ireland. It is just an amazing country in which to attend college. Ireland is the only English speaking member of the European Union, and this offers a really great gateway to the rest of Europe for American students. The country is routinely voted one of the safest, one of the happiest, and one of the friendliest countries in the world. The scenery is just breathtaking, and the entire country is about the size of Illinois, so it makes it incredibly easy to travel around. UCD itself, our campus, is in the heart of Ireland's capital city. Dublin has one of the youngest populations in Europe, and this makes it an amazing city in which to attend college because there's always something going on. There's a million students your age walking around, taking in the sights, going to pubs, and really just exploring everything that Dublin has to offer. Additionally, Dublin is considered the Silicon Valley of Europe and hosts many of the European headquarters for some of America's largest industries, making for a lot of internship and career opportunities for our UCD grads and students. So this is our main campus here and behind me. Uh, we do offer state-of-the-art learning and living facilities right near the bustling city center and Ireland's major business hubs. UCD is a modern campus built on tradition. And what I mean by this is that our buildings, our research institutions and our resources are constantly updated to offer you the best possible learning environment. At the same time, UCD has a really unique and impactful history wherein the college played a huge role in the establishment of Ireland as an independent nation. 
and we have educated over half of Ireland's prime ministers. So we all love to brag about our alumni, but our alumni actually goes on to lead the country. <laughs> Um, as I mentioned before, we are Ireland's most international youth university. UCD especially fosters a really great international student support system with a global lounge, on-campus accommodation, and over 160 clubs and societies. We do have a huge student body, a really extensive alumni network, and a really tight-knit community to kind of help you feel at home even when you're across the ocean. So our campus is very similar to a traditional US college campus with all of the many amenities that we offer. We offer academic supports, including libraries throughout campus dedicated to different academic disciplines. We have student advisors, math and writing centers. Additionally, we offer a lot of personal support in the way of peer mentorship, student health and counseling services, and a wellness text line. We do offer guaranteed on-campus housing for incoming international students. Right now we have room for over 3,000 students on campus. They're currently building even more uh, halls. So we should have an additional thousand by the time you all start next fall. Um, each of these rooms is in an apartment style setup. So every single student living on campus will have their own private bedroom and a shared kitchen and bathroom with maybe three or four other students. A lot of these halls do have gyms, laundries and food cafes or grocery stores right in the building. Um, academically, we do offer over 70 undergraduate courses. So there are two pathways to a degree at UCD. You can enter a direct entry or liberal arts and sciences. So many of our programs are direct entry, offering a three-year bachelor's or four-year combined master's degree. This means that you can start studying your degree right away without having to take any general education requirements. However, if you're a bit more undecided and you want some time to decide, we do offer a standard liberal arts and sciences degree that mirrors this traditional American four-year timeline. So whatever you decide, we do have an extensive alumni network for each program with a hands-on career center, all of this making UCD the number one college for employability in Ireland. So uh, applying to UCD is fairly simple. We have very transparent entry requirements on our website. You can log on to ucd.ie slash global right now to see the exact requirements for your chosen major. You can apply directly at ucd.ie or we are on the American Common Application. One thing to note is that when applying to UCD, you will apply to a specific major. And in this way, we do differ from American institutions. Um, applications are now open for 2021 and they're rolling into the summer. So you have a lot of time to still apply. If you're looking into 2022 entrance, our applications will open in October. So finally, I do often hear people worrying about the price tag of studying abroad. And honestly, it is very price comparable to a US university. Over 80% of our international students at UCD do receive a scholarship from us. Additionally, we accept uh, federal loans. We are on the FAFSA. We accept private loans and the GI Bill. So thank you so much for visiting. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, please reach out to me or visit our website. Thank you. Thank you, we really appreciate it. Just a friendly reminder that if anyone has any questions at all to feel free to submit those through the Q&A, our representatives are here and available to answer any questions you have. And if you have a specific question to also note the school name. The next representative is from University of St. Andrews. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Kelsey, and I am excited to chat with you all a little bit about the University of St. Andrews. Uh, now, I used to call Scotland home. I am now based in the US, about an hour west of Baltimore. Uh, my Scottish accent leaves much to be desired, so I won't force that upon you today, uh, but I'm very excited to share a little bit about St. Andrews. So let's start with a wee geography lesson, uh, just so you have a sense of where St. Andrews is. Uh, St. Andrews is a small east coast town in Scotland, about an hour and a half north of the capital city of Edinburgh. So if you do come to visit us once borders open and uh, decide to attend university here, you would fly into Edinburgh Airport and make your way to St. Andrews from there. So despite St. Andrews being a smaller town, you are absolutely not left out in the middle of nowhere. There are fabulous transportation links to Edinburgh, Glasgow. You can get up to the Scottish Highlands very easily, get out in nature, hug a tree. Uh, 
Uh, and you are, as you can see here, right on the doorstep of Western Europe. So there are incredible opportunities to explore on weekends and um, holidays while being based in St. Andrews. Uh, I got about 12 or so different passport stamps while I was living uh, in Scotland. And it's a, a wonderful way to supplement your education uh, by getting out there and exploring Europe a little bit as well. Now, zooming in a, a little bit, let's take a closer look at St. Andrews. Uh, this is about two thirds of the town of St. Andrews. So if you're really excited by the thought of a welcoming community, uh, not that big city anonymity, St. Andrews could be the perfect fit for you. It'll only be maybe four or six weeks before you start recognizing folks at the coffee shop or bumping into your professors. Uh, so it is a really nice community feel, uh, which is wonderful for international students, you know, to be able to have that softer landing. Uh, in the St. Andrews community. To give you a sense of scale, uh, that main street that runs kind of north to south in that photo, that would take about 30 minutes to walk top to bottom. Uh, so it will not take you long to get comfortable and find your way around St. Andrews. Uh, and as you can also see, there isn't really a designated campus. Uh, the town grew up with the university and vice versa. And so you'll find residence halls, lecture halls scattered all throughout this photo. Uh, and you'll also notice there's a couple beaches. Uh, not many people put Scotland in beaches beaches together, uh, but they are absolutely stunningly beautiful, uh, wonderful places to kind of take a walk and decompress. Uh, highly recommend, uh, you know, taking a trek out there uh, when you come to visit us. Now, St. Andrews, the town, as I mentioned, you know, the town and the university are very closely tied. It's a very historic town as well. Uh, around 22,000 residents in St. Andrews, 9,000 or so of those are students. So the university community makes up almost 50% of, uh, of the overall residents. Uh, and like I said, that very much lends itself to the strong sense of community we have. It is a safe and supportive place to live. The beaches are absolutely beautiful. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that St. Andrews is also the home of golf, the very first golf course. Uh, it, the game was invented here. Uh, I'm not a big golfer myself, but it is a, a pretty cool bucket list uh, thing to be able to say that you played on, on the very first golf course. And you can certainly do that as a student in St. Andrews. Now, the university itself, we are considered one of Scotland's ancient universities. We were founded in 1413, so 600 years of tradition that we are very proud of, and you can feel that history uh, in our buildings all across St. Andrews. However, we have a very 21st century outlook. Uh, with over 9,000 students from over 130 countries, you really have global perspectives brought right to your classroom, which is very incredible. Uh, we're also really proud of our research-led teaching. That means that our researchers and our lecturers are one in the same. You are not six degrees of separation from those academics at the tops of their field. You are being taught right from them. Oftentimes our students are reading the textbooks written by the lecturer uh, at the front of the classroom. So that's always uh, a fantastic element uh, that you're able to dive right in and work with um, the top academics so closely. And having such a, a global footprint on campus lends itself to our global network and global career opportunities as well. So wherever your next steps take you, be it career or further education, you have an extensive alumni network and global career opportunities waiting for you as well. Uh, now you will decide on a major when you apply for St. Andrews, uh, and your major will fall into one of four faculties. So many universities might call it um, the College of Liberal Arts or whatever. Uh, we call it the Faculty of Arts, Faculty of Science, Faculty of Medicine or Divinity. Uh, so here is the list of subjects that we offer. However, this really doesn't tell the whole story. Uh, many students, about half, will pursue a uh, what's called a joint honors degree program, where they will uh, study two subjects equally. Uh, and those cross-faculty uh, that list in the middle column there uh, count as part of the Faculty of Arts or the Faculty of Science. So you could pair up psychology with neuroscience, or you could pair up psychology with archaeology or art history, what have you. So there are some really amazing ways to uh, really hone in and find a specialization for yourself. Uh, and with St. Andrews as well, you don't start um, university with any general education courses, you pick three subjects right out of the gate so you can dive headfirst into the subjects that you really want to study. 
So to sum up St. Andrews in a nutshell, we are considered a mid-sized university, about 9,000 students set in a small town on the eastern coast of Scotland. Uh, almost half the population are students, so you'll feel right at home in St. Andrews. We're quite proud of our global reputation, currently ranked number two in the UK. Uh, also quite proud of our research-led teaching, our diverse campus. Uh, it is easy to apply to St. Andrews via the Common App, UCAS, or uh, admission straight to our website. Scotland is a beautiful, safe, and friendly place to live and you can enjoy a varied social life over 50 sports and over 150 clubs and societies uh, on campus and all set in a stunning coastal location in Scotland. Uh, so I'll pop my contact details into the chat as well and look forward to chatting with you more soon. Thanks so much everyone. Very helpful information. Thank you. The next representative is from Glee on Institute of Higher Education. You got it. You did it great. Thank you. So my name's Patricia. Um, I'm with Gleon. Uh, we're based in Switzerland. I'm going to share a little bit of information with you, but I'm the regional admissions director here in the U.S. and I'm based in Chicago and Austin, Texas, ironically. I've been with Gleon for about three years. Really proud of that fact. Um, really happy to be sharing with you a little bit of an overview. Uh, the school has three campuses, two in Switzerland and uh, one in London. We are a school that is a uh, private US accredited. Um, we really are a bachelor of business um, administration program with an alignment to hospitality, finance and luxury. We offer master's programs, we have summer programs and we host a lot of students for study abroad. We are very international. So if you're a student that's looking for a lot of, um, of that kind of a profile and want to be able to travel, you're gonna learn a lot from us. Uh, we're a three and a half year program. We don't have as many gen eds as you might see in the US. We also have two internships um, and we also encourage our students to do study abroad with some of our sister campuses. You'll see some of the information that I've got here, but it's pretty basic. All courses are taught in English, but you will be taking a foreign language. Our campus is based in the French speaking part of Switzerland. We have on and off campus um, housing very robust student life like all of our universities that are presenting tonight. Our acceptance rate is at about 65% and we offer merit and financial aid. Um, I also wanted to share with you that we're US accredited. I think that's something that's important to know. Um, we're also world ranked. Uh, we average in the top three in the world consistently for about the last 10 years. Um, our two campuses that are in Switzerland, you'll see one here at the top. It's right here off Lake Geneva in Montreal. Absolutely stunning and gorgeous. And then our other main campus is in Boulle, which is about 45 minutes, a little bit more towards the center of Switzerland. We have another campus in um, also in London. Um, so our students have the opportunity to maybe consider going to London and do a semester or actually doing their entire program there. And we host a number of our master's programs there. Um, this is a really exciting um, campus to be at because of all the other internship opportunities that come along with going to a school like Leon. So I'm just sharing with you a little bit here. Um, what's a little unique about our program is it is, as I shared, three and a half years. Your first semester, you'll spend two weeks in Paris as part of an exchange program. Um, it'll incorporate two semesters and you have the option to either study in London with our sister school in Spain, and then also in Shanghai. So you have a lot of different options. Um, we really look for students that are focusing on an international business career path um, with maybe a focus in finance, events, or in uh, luxury management. We're really well known for the luxury side. So if you're a student that's really looking for that robust um, different options and really want a more global profile, um, we have a lot of um, considerations with our different campuses. One of our programs is a five-year program where you come in and you're going to do your bachelor's and do your master's and end with uh, three semesters of internship and two degrees. And this is one of our most popular programs. Um, we're also really proud of our relationship with the industry. Um, 
Today, in fact, on campus, we had career day. We had 186 employers for about 2000 students. We had 50 students offered on the spot today. Um, and we have about 500 students um, going through the rest of the interview process with opportunities. So employment is something that we're really well known for. Um, and our students average in about the 92 to 98% placement rates when they graduate. I'm just going to slide through some of the housing for you. You can see it's a gorgeous campus. Um, housing is very pretty. You have many options on where you can eat. Um, our campus, um, you'll be able to live in your own room or shared room. Um, we have a very, very strong student government. Um, and if you follow us on Instagram, you'll see a lot of what they're doing on networking. We really encourage our students to get into leadership roles. Um, part of the advantage of going to a school in Europe is honestly where you can travel on the weekends. So we do a lot of excursions, um, sporting clubs, and we also offer a summer program. So you can come visit us and stay for a week or come for two weeks and stay at both of our campuses. Um, with regard to admissions, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail today, but I will tell you on average, we look for about a 3.3 to 3.5 GPA, um, but it's very holistic and we're really looking for real, that motivation, that international, that can do attitude. And that's something I'm happy to talk to you about and a little bit more of a customized um, conversation. So I'm sharing with you here a little bit about if you'd like to come visit our campus, we do on-campus um, tours, we do open days for the weekend, virtual tours. Um, we are in Chicago often and um, able to come meet you at any time that you'd like. My information's here and it's a pleasure to meet all of you. Thank you. Great, thank you. Just another friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit those through the Q&A function. Uh, regardless of any question at all uh, that you have about the college application process or even um, for a specific school, we encourage you to submit your questions. Um, and if you have a specific question, to also note the school name. Our next representative is from EHL Switzerland, Singapore. Correct. Thank you so much, uh, Catherine. Uh, so thank you everyone for participating here today. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, share my screen really quick. And there we go. All right. So again, my name is Ralph De Pierre. I represent uh, EHL in Switzerland and Singapore. Um, we are located in Lausanne, Switzerland. That's where our main campus and our Bachelor in International Hospitality Management happens. Uh, it's about 40 minutes from Geneva, so very easy access as well. Uh, in Singapore, we offer the same exact uh, bachelor program, being the only difference that uh, everyone starts uh, in Lausanne for their first preparatory year, and then they would fly over uh, to Singapore, having an even more international experience. Um, I always like to start with a little bit of history. So we were founded in 1893, making us the first uh, uh, hospitality and business school in the world. Uh, we're also uh, the number one hospitality school in the world, ranked by QS Reimagined from 2019 up to date. Um, and now, why would you choose EHL aside from uh, uh, the rankings? Uh, well, oops, sorry about that. We have a strong heritage, like I was saying. We were, we are the number one. Uh, we are the first hospitality school in the world. Uh, we have a lot of group resources, being that we're uh, we've grown to become a corporation as well. Uh, lifelong learning, unique community. We are very international, with over uh, 120 nationalities on campus and a very large uh, alumni uh, network as well. Uh, all right. Oh, sorry about that. I didn't see it wasn't showing. So this is it. Now we, this is a little bit about our three campuses. I already mentioned both uh, Singapore and Lausanne where we offer the bachelor. We also have the Basu campus on the East Coast of uh, Switzerland. That's where we have more of a vocational program for people that are more, more focused in the hospitality side. Um, and we also receive uh, students, students coming from uh, transfers from other universities on that campus. 
now a little uh, a bit of a, a, a comparison between our uh, three campuses. So basically the Bachelor of International Hospitality Management offered in both of our campus, a little bit of explanation about the Basu campus and what we offer over there. Uh, but I wanted to point out that we also have MBAs, uh, master programs in our Lausanne campus, as well as other professional development programs like the Culinary Arts and Restaurant Management Certificate. And also uh, for those that are just uh, starting their research on universities, we offer summer programs, which is a very interesting way to get to know hospitality in Switzerland and EHL uh, from inside. Uh, we have a very uh, uh, focused goal on being uh, sustainable. So we have a very sustainable campus. We're going through a remodel, which is going to be ready by the end of this year. So anyone that applies uh, right now will have the uh, um, brand new campus to enjoy and take advantage of. Uh, again, we are in Switzerland. So uh, we're in the middle of Europe, uh, giving the students an opportunity to travel all over Europe while they're studying uh, their four year bachelor. In Singapore, uh, I always mention Singapore uh, to students that are more focused in business, considering Singapore is the business hub of the world. Uh, again, it is the same program. Uh, it will be an even more international experience and it will be a little bit more uh, less uh, uh, costly. So a little bit better uh, cost effective. Uh, we offer uh, for entrepreneurs, uh, for students that are looking into getting uh, their business going, uh, we have uh, startup hubs uh, offered on campus with uh, um, support from our staff and our professors. Uh, now, our academic pathway, which is our bachelor program, is ideal for that student that likes to learn in a dynamic environment. I always mention that because it is a lot of uh, hands-on learning experience uh, from day one. Some of our statistics about students coming from all over the world, as you can see, we have a 4% American population uh, and it's growing every single year. So you will be in touch with people from your own countries as well as from different cultures, different countries and uh, all, every single place in the world. So a little bit about how our uh, program is structured. Uh, I mentioned about the preparatory year. Uh, it's uh, good to mention because it is a year where you're gonna be doing a lot of uh, workshops and hands-on experience, as well as going for your first internship uh, out of two, which gives you one year professional experience by the end of the program. Uh, our last final project is a nine week project where you can actually choose between doing a group or a, a solo project, as well as if you are an entrepreneur and open or planning on opening your company, you can actually do your project based on that. Some of these statistics, a lot of people have that misconception about hospitality being just hotels and travel and that's pretty much about it, but um, 53% of our students, they do go to other sectors from luxury to retail, to bank, finance, real estate, consulting, and uh, you know, giving a lot more opportunities to our students uh, <clears throat> uh, around 150 different countries. So recruitment opportunities comes from inside. We have two job fairs every year with over 160 companies, a uh, platform where you can look for your internships and jobs, uh, bringing us to a 96% employability rate. Some of the companies that do hire from EHL uh, I'd like to point out that there are many other companies and not just these, but it's always good to uh, check it out. Our admissions process is very simple. I'm just going to skip this one. It's a three-step process. We're members of the Common App. Um, we are FOSFA approved as well. So uh, if you plan on taking a loan in the United States, you can always uh, bring it to uh, Switzerland as well. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to get in touch with me in regards to uh, 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 application or even our qualifications. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Our last representative, but certainly not least, is from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jonathan. I'm just gonna jump into the presentation for you all today because I'm here to talk about SAIC as it's also known, the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, which maybe some of you are familiar with since we're in the exact same city, not that far away. Um, but to go ahead and just kind of give a quick general overview of what SAIC is, uh, the School of the Art Institute of Chicago is a specialized art and design school. Um, it's very highly ranked in terms of our national and international rank ranking. As a specialized school, it's always good to kind of look into that. It'll kind of give you a key into the quality of education you're going to receive. and um, 
SAAC actually ranks in the top two art schools in the nation, as well as uh, the top 10 worldwide. So we're really excited that we've been able to find ourselves so highly ranked. But to just kind of get into it, I think it's always good to start talking about SAAC with kind of talking about the museum first. So as the name might suggest, the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and the Art Institute of Chicago are very much one and the same. We're very much connected. So the Art Institute of Chicago, which maybe some of you have visited um, on a field trip or just when you've been downtown, it's that big building that's right on um, Michigan Avenue by Grand to Millennium Park. It kind of acts as a center to the city in a lot of ways, but it's also the center to our campus because we are right down in the loop. Um, and we have this kind of historic relationship as well. Uh, in fact, the school is what originally founded the museum. So if the school didn't exist, the museum never would have. Uh, so the idea behind the museum kind of came into being as uh, an, an extension of the classroom, if you will. There was a group of uh, teachers, uh, professors that thought it would be beneficial for students studying art and design to have a collection to go into, a study collection to go into and kind of uh, put these ideas that they were learning about in the classroom with finished works in the gallery. So they developed it into the museum we know it to be today, third largest in the world. Um, and still kind of holds that idea of an extension of the classroom. It's a resource for our students. You have free admission for the four years that you attend. All you need to do is show your ID, your school ID, and you walk on in so you can kind of get lost. You'll have class in the museum. Your art history class isn't like lecture style where you just like sit in front and like watch a, uh, a PowerPoint. You'll be in the museum looking at the work and talking about it at the same time. And it's very much part of our overall curriculum. And to just give a sense of the type of areas of study we have to offer. SAC really uh, designed itself off of this, this idea of interdisciplinary learning, working among multiple disciplines as an artist and as a designer. So we really encourage students to move freely among our kind of different areas of study that we have to offer. In fact, we don't have majors. We're a majorless school. We have five different degree paths, which I'll get into in just a little bit, um, but we don't have majors because we want our students to kind of freely customize their education. Um, these overarching degree paths allow you to move from one department, one area of study to the next, really kind of taking on what you want and having the freedom to explore, collaborate, um, and just take advantage of everything that we have as a school. Uh, so this is a quick sampling of just some of our different areas of study. So we really have everything you can imagine that would relate to art and design. And again, this list is customizable. So you can have multiple interests. If you're looking at it and thinking like, oh yeah, sculpture, would love that. Also art and science, like how can I make that work? Well, you can, and we'll help you do that. Um, so this is just a quick sampling. We have uh, 18 recognized departments, 48 recognized areas of study. That's always growing. Um, but to go into what are these different degree paths that we do have, so you kind of know where you're grounding your education, what will you actually get um, as a bachelor's degree. So we have five different choices. Our most common, if you will, is going to be our Bachelor of Fine Arts in Studio. This is for students who are really dedicated to the studio arts proper. So painting and drawing, sculpture, fiber art, things like that. Uh, so this also includes, however, students who are focused in the design areas, so fashion, um, architecture, designed objects. Uh, so it does act as our most popular or most kind of um, enrolled degree because it just incorporates the majority of what our students are studying. But we do have a few degree paths that are a little bit more specialized, like our Bachelor of Fine Arts with an emphasis in writing, clearly meant for artists working uh, in a writing-based practice. Maybe they want to be a novelist, comics artist, something like that. We also have a BFA with an emphasis in art education, which is meant for students interested in going into the education field. Uh, this is a great degree path because you'll actually be certified to teach at completion of the degree path to teach in the state of Illinois, K through 12. And we also have two B8 tracks, so Bachelor of Art tracks in art history and um, as well as visual and critical studies. And so just to kind of give a little bit more of a, a, a difference between Bachelor of Fine Arts and Bachelor of Arts, because I think that's kind of helpful for some students. Bachelor of Fine Arts is really kind of focusing on making, where Bachelor of Arts is much more literature, academically driven, scholarly based work. So if you want to be an art historian or a curator, that would be a good path to go down. 
And then to go ahead and jump in just for time's sake, because I know we have a Q&A, um, the application requirements for applying to SAC, we do use the Common App, which is pretty standard. The portfolio is the most important part of our application. Uh, as an art and design school, we clearly want to know what kind of work you're making. So we ask that students submit 10 to 15 digital images or five minutes of time-based work. The content of that is fully up to you as a student, but you should be empowered to select the works that you are enthusiastic about, you'd like to share with us. Um, and that you're excited about. Artist statement about a page in length, high school transcripts, letter of recommendation, where test optional, most schools are moving forward. Uh, and that is what we have for our requirements. So I will go ahead and end it there for all of you, but you can connect with me and we can chat more about whatever it is that you're excited about in terms of your art practice. Uh, and I can also do a portfolio review, but I think it's time for Q and A if I'm not mistaken. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, all great information shared from all our representatives. And as stated, yes, we are moving into the Q&A portion of this session. So I invite all our representatives to please turn on their cameras to get ready to unmute. And our first question here is, what advice would you give someone going through the collar search process? Again, what advice would you give someone going through the collar search process? Well, I guess I can start with this one. Um, my advice is always to students. Um, sometimes the, the, the best place to start is telling yourself you deserve to be there. Um, you're going to go to college somewhere. And so don't make it more stressful than it needs to be. You've done what you needed to do, but you have to know that you deserve to be there. That is really great advice. I love that. Um, <laughs> My biggest piece of advice, um, I would say to keep an open mind. I think it's really easy to just apply to the schools that your friends are applying to, maybe the schools that your parents graduated from, but you really never know what your dream school is gonna be until you actually do the research. So keep an open mind and look at schools that you may not even think of. Like my advice, it's go ahead, Kelsey. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead, Kelsey. I just started going in order. Um, I think my advice is to keep in mind the word holistic, both in terms of your application that you're considering, you know, not just your academic, but just the whole picture of, of you. Um, and also in terms of your search, you know, think about the, the lifestyle that you want to have in this next exciting phase of your life, uh, you know, because you're, you're living somewhere in addition to going to university somewhere. So really think about, uh, you know, all sides of, of that um, as you continue your search. Thanks, Kelsey. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump in. <laughs> so I would say my advice is as you're looking at that overall program to try, if you can, try to consider study abroad in there, some kind of international aspect. Can't tell you how many times I've talked to students who never did study abroad that regret it because never in your life are you going to have that opportunity where it's just like, so queued up and set up for you. And the experience is life-changing. It truly is. I mean, like for me, I got to go to some places like St. Andrews and, you know, I, I will never forget some of my experiences of being able to travel all around Europe. So um, I, that's my two cents, so. All right, so, uh, well, uh, everyone just gave so many good advices that I'm left with uh, just a little to talk about, but I do have a few. Uh, more, you know, uh, in regards to applying to European universities and not just European, but in general. Uh, first and foremost, do your research, not just in the hospitality, but also, uh, I mean, not hospitality, but the, the area that you're looking for. Um, and not just that, but into the university as well. Second advice, uh, get work experience if you can. I mean, if you have the opportunity, it's always good. It will always enrich your application towards any university if you do get work experience in the field that you're planning in getting into. Uh, then show your personality on your essay. If you do have an essay to do, uh, we all know that the Common App uh, does uh, require an essay and most of the universities also do require that, especially in Europe. So show your personality, just be yourself. Uh, don't don't, don't try to be someone you're not. And uh, that's what we wanna see uh, in Europe. It's a very, very holistic process. So you will want to show your personality. And last but not least, own your application. 
make sure you, you have every single piece of document uploaded. Make sure you keep in touch with your recruitment officer. Uh, we are a bridge between you and our universities. So take advantage of that. That will take a lot of the stress of going through a selection process off your shoulders and into ours, which are, is our job to do. So keep that in mind. That is it. And then for me, I think one thing I really encourage students to think about or one thing to do is ask a lot of questions, ask a ton of questions about the schools that you're looking at, um, see what they can provide you in terms of financial support, the different scholarships that you're going to be eligible for. Um, and also, if you can talk to current students, can you talk to alumni? Can you talk to the different departments that the school has um, before you're actually admitted? Um, you can do that at SAIC. I'm sure you can do that at most schools, but I think that's something that I really encourage students to do because then you would be able to um, just have that what kind of one-on-one -on -one, uh, really kind of direct connection with the resources that you'd have available to you. Awesome, thank you um, for all the great advice. I noticed there was a very common uh, trend of just being open and just uh, looking at all the different possibilities out there. Um, and so uh, I definitely um, agree with that and think that, um, again, the college search process is one as a journey of your own. So um, thank you to our representatives for being here, for sharing great advice and all the information um, about, about your respective institutions. And thank you to each of you for joining us. We have now reached the conclusion of this session, um, but as we close, there'll be a very quick four question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, your feedback would be super helpful. There are, there are not any more sessions, but um, again, thank you all for being here. Um, remember that uh, you can ask your St. Ignatius counselors questions about the college search process in the counselor um, room. So feel free to uh, dive into there and get more information and get more guidance. And lastly, this session is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash Ignitious. Again, thank you all and have a great night. Thank you, everybody.